You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Now today I'm talking about some off-grid stuff, uh, an experience I had recently with the family um, this past weekend, in fact, so I wanted to share it while it's fresh. It was, uh, without exaggerating, it, it, it was amazing. It was it was absolutely so refreshing and different in so many ways. So I'll talk about that in a moment. We'll get on to it. A couple of housekeeping notes. The first one is, if you haven't yet left a review for the podcast, come on! Um, you can go to uh, Apple Podcasts or... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones now, Spotify or wherever you consume this, and please leave a review. Uh, Absolutely helps massively in terms of getting the word out. Um, It supports me, it supports the show, it gives me some some feedback and makes me feel happy when I read those messages. They get um, consolidated and and sent to me once a week. The other thing I wanted to say was... um, I'm always on the lookout for new content. So if you have topics you'd like me to talk about, um, you know, whatever that happens to be that's going on for you in your life, then please put that in an email or a direct message on Instagram if you like. But um, you can go to anxietypodcast.com, click on the contact page and send me an email. Um, and then I will, I may, I'm not guaranteeing it because it depends on what the question is, but usually I, I eventually answer most of them. Um, and uh, yeah, gives me some some more things to think about that are current and relevant for you. Because as my life kind of changes and evolves, I realize that we're all at different parts in in our journeys. And uh, that's kind of part of why I'm, I'm continuing to do the podcast is because um, there's massive value in kind of looking back and, and reconnecting with some of the old things and, and telling you about some of the new things that I'm up to. Sorry, you got to hydrate. Um, just on my first walk of the day. So uh, I told you last time I was doing this 75 hard uh, thing. And I think I'm on, I started, I realized the other day, I started on uh, September 1st. So I'm on the 15th day of 75 days. And that included this trip I just went on. So I had to kind of navigate around that. And there's been a few, few difficult uh, pieces around it. I'm gonna. I'll probably do a deeper dive into the insights. Couple off the top of my head as we go in real time here. The first one is reading. I love reading. Turns out I enjoy reading if I actually make a point of doing it in my life. Um, I have already completed one whole book. Um, more than one book actually. Yeah, two whole books. Um, the first one, which I mentioned here before, I think is the Psychology of Money. I just read another book called The Last Lecture by a guy called Randy Posh, I think is how you, I don't know how you pronounce his last name. It's P-A-U-S-C-H, Posh. I'm not quite sure. But if you look him up on YouTube, um, The Last Lecture, um, it should be on the Carnegie Mellon page. It's essentially um, this this wonderful man who had a wonderful life and, and dreams and aspirations and uh, unfortunately was taken too early by cancer and... Uh, in in his words, he was lucky in that he uh, he had he saw it coming. He had time to document his life and leave lessons for his children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the story just blows my mind, and there's loads of uh, there's loads of gold in there. So that was the second book I read. I've just started another one now, which uh, was written by the guy who started the company called Zappos. So a bit more of an entrepreneurial book. But anyway, reading when you as part of this challenge, I have to read ten pages a day, and just having that sort of rigidity of having to do it um, means you get it done. So I normally, you know, sit down after dinner and I'll just read my 10 pages. Uh, on the weekend, because I went away, I ended up reading, I probably read half, most of the book, the the last lecture book on the weekend. Uh, it's funny, I was telling my friend, um, she, uh, I've got a friend who interviewed at my last company and on the day she interviewed us, she said she, she said she was really into reading. I said, oh, what kind of books do you like? And she said, oh, one of my favorite books is this book called The Last Lecture. So that day on that lunchtime, I walked down to the bookshop. This is three or four years ago and bought the book and, and put it in my house and uh, just picked it up again last week and thought, I should probably read this. It turns out it's, uh, it's amazing. Uh, funny how some th- sometimes things are, are sat right under our noses in terms of knowledge that's going to be really beneficial. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at on the challenge. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to share was 
morning routines. So um, a lot of people talk about morning routines and they talk about they get up at 4.30 in the morning and they, you know, they run a marathon and then they drink a glass of water and meditate for two hours and, you know, those types of morning routines you hear about and they're quite extreme and I'm like, what time? You must go to bed at like 6 p.m. to get up at that time. I don't know how you cram, cram it all in. So perhaps if you're like a single you know, a, a bachelor and you've got nobody else and you've got black, amazing blackout blinds and you can sleep whenever you want, that might work. But for me, i got teenage boys. They're not going to bed at 6 p.m. Um, I'm lucky if I can get them into bed by 11 p.m. So, you know, you've got to kind of play with the, play with the hand you're dealt, so to speak. Um, but, and so, you know, getting up, I, I have been trying recently to get up at like six, um, but even then I'm finding that I'm a little bit lagging during the day sometimes. So anyway, 6.30 to 7 seems to be a good number for me. Um, I do need that eight hours sleep. And I was reading something the other day, part of what inspired the trip to Strathcona that I'm going to talk about, but I was reading something the other day, which essentially was saying that we actually need more like eight to 10 hours sleep. You know, if you really want to maximize um, you know, if you want to maximize your your body and energy and vitality and all the rest of it. So it seems like over the years, we've chipped that away to be more and more efficient. And in today's ultra competitive entrepreneurial, let's win the day scenario, getting up at five or four or any ridiculous o'clock number is, uh, is not for me. Might be for you. If it works for you and you feel great, then great. But we know that sleep is the foundation of health and sleep is the foundation of everything. And if you don't sleep, then you know, we're on the anxiety podcast. Anxiety is going to be high if you're not getting really good sleep. And if you suffer with any kind of insomnia, you can no doubt agree with that. Anyway, all of that is a long way of saying that I've kind of established this new routine, which I'm really enjoying. And the routine involves, uh, you know, now getting up 637, um, which means then kind of getting into, uh, you know, starting on my water because I got to drink a gallon of water a day, which is no mean feat, although it's getting easier over time. Um, get the kids ready for school, interact with them a little bit. Then the last, probably the last three or four or five days, I've been with my middle son. My older son goes to a school on a bus. My younger son gets driven by uh, Steph. And my middle son walks to school. So I've been walking to school with him. Um, It's not very far. It's like a five-minute walk. But what I do is I walk with him. We chat a little bit. He bounces his basketball and tells me about his days and uh, what's kind of what he's got coming up. And then I'll continue after walking with him. So I get that... 10 minutes of quality time every day, which is pretty insightful without technological distractions. Uh, He goes off to school and I carry on and continue the rest of my 45 minute walk. Um, Workout number one of the day done. I just, you know, I walk down, uh, there's quite a big hill where I live and I I walk down the hill and about half time I turn around and come back up the hill again. So that's kind of how the routine's been going. I've been really enjoying it. Um, it means I'm starting working a little bit later, but you start work then with like, you know, you've been looking at the sun for half an hour. If it's a sunny day, like it is today. Um, oh, and on that walk, that's the other thing, right? I've, I've been sending voice notes to clients and, uh, this morning, for instance, on the walk, I just made notes for this podcast. So it's like super efficient. Um, I've been sending voice notes to my mum and dad who think it's, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, making their day every day now with a five to, you know, five minute voice note. I said the first day I sent a five minute voice note and my mum in like classic style sends me back 20 minutes of voice notes. When am I going to have time to listen to 20 minutes of voice notes? So I had to like listen to some and then the next day listen to the rest and I, and I sent another one back. And now that I've been doing it every day for a few days, I think she's running out of things to say, but the first download was significant. But anyway, I sent some videos to clients. I sent some voice notes out. If not, I can just listen to a bit of music or put a podcast on or listen to nothing, you know? So that for me has so far been a a really nice morning routine and uh, thoroughly enjoying that. Anyway, the point of today's show, 10 minutes in, Tim, get to the point, was uh, to tell you a bit about the weekend. So this weekend, we went to a place called Strathcona Provincial Park, which is in the northern central part of Vancouver Island where I live and um it was inspired by so it was inspired by a conversation with a friend who we were talking about you know this kind of um life where you could like live off the land and go hunting and uh you know collect food and 
animals to eat and shop once a month at the local market, have no Wi-Fi, have no cell phone, read a few books, stare at the stars at night and uh, just really live a very, you know, that romantic notion of living off the land and living a very uh, uh, simple life, minimalist life, um, which is a theme that I come back to periodically. But this one, this is an extreme version. And so anyway, following this conversation, I thought, right, I want to go wild camping. So I look up wild camping. You can do that. There's lots of places on in British Columbia where it's crown land and you can camp there if you want. Um, I thought, yeah, probably not going to take the whole family wild camping. Um, so then I thought, right, I think I'm a bit more of a cabin person. So um, I went and looked at um, cabins for rent and uh, found some cabins up at this Strathcona Provincial Park uh, area. And that was kind of where the where the um, exploration started. And so I booked a cabin for two nights. We went up on the Friday after, after school and uh, stayed there till Sunday lunchtime. And I knew going in, because it said on the website that there's no Wi-Fi. It turns out there is some Wi-Fi in the hotel, uh, in the lodge lobby area, but I didn't tell anybody that. So there's no Wi-Fi and uh, there's no cell phone signal. Definitely no Wi-Fi in any of the cabins. There's no televisions in any of the cabins. So I looked at the pictures online, and this is one of the f- few cases where the pictures on the website didn't do it justice for how beautiful the place was when we got there. And we were literally right on this lake with these amazing mountain views. Um, yeah, it was just a, a st- if you go and look at my Instagram, Tim JP Collins, you'll see I do this little walk-up bit where I walk up to the mountains, and then it sort of reveals the scenery in the background is it's just absolutely stunning. Um, so one of the things I did before I went there, I spoke to my assistant and said, uh, right, I'm going to forward all my phone calls to you. And we set up the business line and set up my personal line. And here's what we're going to do if this happens. And if somebody wants to, you know, do some kind of a real estate deal when I'm away, here's the person who will stand in for me. And so we set all this stuff up. Um, and it turns out when I got back, I said, right, how many phone calls did we get? She said, none, nobody phoned you. Got a few emails, a couple of text messages. Um, so that was just a, a good example of uh, massive preparation. And you sort of worry about, oh, what if somebody really needs me because I'm so necessary? And turns out nobody needed me, um, which was which was sad. <laughs> but also kind of cool because it means if I do it again, then I'll be less worried about the phone ringing off the hook and bothering my poor assistant all weekend. Um, anyway, we got there and the kids, you know, you could tell to start with, they were kind of like, what we, sp- what we, dad, what are we supposed to do? My phone doesn't work. There's no te- there's no Netflix, Apple TV, Disney Plus, Amazon Prime Video to watch. What are we supposed to do? And um, so I said, I don't know. Go and have a look outside, you know, walk around. And the first night, I suppose, we got there and cooked dinner for a bit. And then the kids started doing this thing where they got a pad of paper out and they would each have to draw a character. I didn't come up with this idea. They did. They'd each have to draw a character. So they drew like Shrek, for instance, and then see who could draw the best picture of Shrek. And they did this a number of times and uh, amused themselves with that. Um, but that was kind of fun. And then the next morning we woke up and uh, we went for a swim in this absolutely stunning lake. And as as I dived in, sort of ran from the shore into the lake and and dived into it, as you swam about 10 to 12 feet out, it just dropped down into like the deep, deepest, deep blue uh, of nothingness. I don't know how deep this lake was, but it got super deep really fast. Um, and I have to admit, it like flashed through my head. I thought, right... I'm a very good swimmer. I am a good swimmer. I mean, I'm not the fittest swimmer, but I'm a good swimmer. Um, I used to be a lifeguard. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I think of myself as a good swimmer. There's no tide. There's no rip rip tide or anything going on. It's just a flat, flat as a pancake lake, right? So it's not like, you know, there's no uh, waves or anything to, to knock you out. It's a very safe place to swim. But it's really deep, and it, as I'm swimming out there, to the there's a row of logs, um, which is kind of the break from any like little waves in the middle of the lake that come in. It sort of breaks them up from the from the beach area. So that's probably I don't know, a couple hundred meters offshore, and um, I'm swimming towards that thing. Right, I'll swim to the log, see if I can climb up on one and jump off again. And as I'm swimming through this very deep, hundreds and hundreds of feet deep, I don't know how deep it was, but it's deep, deep lake. Swimming through that, I'm thinking. No mobile phone, no phone to call anybody if Tim drowns. Um, and, you know, the, that 
comes into your mind a little bit because you're like, well, now you know, now you're you are you wanted that world experience. I mean, now you're staying in a luxury cabin <laughs> with a beautiful wood stove and full size fridge and heated floors in the bathrooms, but still, it was hard, guys. All right, um, the swimming part. Anyway, that flashed through my mind. I thought, oh, I can swim. I can swim well. I'll be fine. Uh, swam out to the logs and uh, hung out there for a little bit and managed to climb in and jump off again. And yeah, it was just, uh, it was very um, grounding, very grounding. And we then did other things during that day. I won't bore you with all of them, but boredom was one of them for the kids, actually. They got bored and said, you know, now what, you know, the, the now what we're supposed to do thing popped up a few times. One of the beautiful things was my uh, 14 year old son. Um, we were staying near a place called Gold River, and my 14 year old son went out and started, you know, he got it in his head that maybe there's some gold out there somewhere. <laughs> like a, um, the gold rush got him, the gold rush fever, and he went outside and started panning for gold around the side of the lake. And you would think for a lot of people, you know, they might have a look and skip a couple of rocks over and realize there really is no gold. But he was out there for three hours, just hunched over, squat down with a silver bucket he procured from the kitchen. And he's just looking and sieving through bits of sand. And he wasn't finding any gold, but he's finding all these interesting rocks. And he came back with all these different rocks. And he said, I think this one's flint and this one might be a piece of coal. And maybe this one's gold. I don't know. But... um but yeah, he had a good time. That's a seriously long amount of time for a 14-year-old boy to be distracted on something like that. So that was very cool. The other beautiful thing I saw was my youngest son just, I caught him so many times just staring out the window or just staring at the wall, just staring off into space, which isn't something that happens at home because um, our lives are, are filled with, uh, you know, Netflix or watching films or watching YouTube, which is definitely this generation's... Uh, weapon of choice would be watching endless ridiculous people on youtube shouting really loud um and yeah so it was you know my oldest son slept quite a lot maybe he needed to sleep so that was fine but and then we in the afternoon we had some lunch and we went for a walk went for a hike up the hill behind us to, to kind of check out the view a little bit and one of the things that like as we sat there kind of drinking bottomless cups of tea and uh talking about our experience my wife and i were sat there just saying like this it, to me i'll talk about myself it, to me it felt like the longest day of my adult life it felt, felt like it was so long like we we you know we swam and walked and had breakfast and played you know they played games and they went out and, came, and i looked at my watch and it was like 10 30 in the morning and 10 30 in the morning in my everyday life is like, you know, you blink and have a cup of coffee and check your email and it's 10 30 in the morning, you know? So that was, that was something that I kept coming, you know, I thought, well, maybe, you know, my, my son who was panning for gold came out and came back and thought he'd been out there for like six or seven hours. He's like, is it dinner time yet? I was like, no, it's uh, just not noon quite, not quite noon yet. So that slowing down time for me was like a very, the biggest, the most interesting thing out of the whole experience was slowing down time. And I, you know, the, I'll have to look into it a little bit more, but my sort of rudimentary evaluation of that is that, you know, first of all, it was a, it was a novel environment and we know novel environments, you know, like when you go on holiday, things seem to sometimes seem to take a long time because everything's new and it's the first time you're seeing it and your brain's got to process it and it's different and interesting. And so that's one component, but I think perhaps the bigger component was, is that when we are consuming technology, uh, television, streaming services, social media, internet browsing, shopping on Amazon, whatever you're doing, um, I think time speeds up because, um, well, I think it speeds up time. I think time goes faster because it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, a bomb for our brains where it's just like a, a drug that um, satisfies us and keeps, you know, it's like when you you're on Facebook and you find something and you go and start researching something different. Next thing you know, you bought a new wallet on Amazon, not speaking from experience much. <laughs> but these things happen. We go down these rabbit holes. And, and when you're in a place without any uh, internet or technology, you don't go down a rabbit hole because it's, it's just your mind. So you process things much slower. Um, 
so that was, you know, that was the biggest takeaway. That was the biggest thing I wanted to share. There's other things like the kids were dancing and interacting and they did a rap battle, which was very amusing. At nighttime, there's no light pollution. So it's very dark. We went out for a walk at night and they were kind of freaking out. That's, I grew up in a village in the middle of England where there's no street lights. So that's kind of my jam. But for them, they're like, God, that, this is so scary. We can't see anything. I was like, yeah, it's, it's nighttime and it's cloudy. No stars, no street lights. This is how it's supposed to be. Um, so I think, uh, you know, definitely it wasn't all, uh, roses in terms of, uh, the boys interacting with each other, but I think it was very worthwhile and it definitely made me want more of that. In fact, um, whilst I was there in the cabin, I deleted Facebook and Instagram, um, for the umpteenth time off of my phone. I've done it so many times. Um, but it was just another, just another reminder of like, what am I doing, um, particularly in today's world where most of the stuff I'm seeing on Facebook and Instagram is triggering because it's around polarizing points of view about, you know, obvious topics. And I just don't, I don't want to get into that in either direction. I think a lot of it is people baiting other people or trolling or whatever you want to call it, where they're trying to get a response. And I just don't like that. I don't think it's good for anybody. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was a big one. And, uh, I, I thought this was going to be a sort of very fast episode just to tell you a bit about the experience, but it turns out I had quite a lot to say. Um, but there's a, there's a lot in there, and I'm going to unpack it a little bit more. I'm definitely going to do it again, and we're definitely going to go on... Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm the kind of person who wants to go in a tent, but um, I would. I would. But with the boys, it's nice to have some separation and stuff, and uh, again, we were not slumming it by any means. We were staying in a two-bedroom, two-bathroom beautiful cabin on the side of a beautiful lake it it was uh i said as we're leaving do you think it was long enough because we only stayed sort of one full day and two nights i probably could have stayed another full day and left the following morning but anyway it worked well it did feel like a break it did feel like a reset a refresh and it's definitely come away with lots of uh uh, residual benefits in terms of things to think about. So anyway, I hope you found that um, little story interesting and I hope you are having a good week so far. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.